NAD is considered a longevity molecule with many benefits for slowing down aging. You do see a decrease in NAD levels the older you get, and the low levels of NAD then accelerate the hallmarks of aging. But most people go about raising their NAD levels completely wrong. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to maximize your NAD production and minimize its loss with age. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. It's showtime. But first, what is NAD? NAD or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide is a coenzyme that's found in all living cells. You need NAD for energy production, metabolic processes, mitochondrial function, antioxidant defense, DNA repair and circadian rhythm alignment. With age, you see a decrease in NAD levels, primarily due to increased oxidative stress and reduced antioxidant defense. The low levels of NAD have been found to increase the hallmarks of aging, such as cell senescence, DNA damage, mitochondrial dysfunction, and others. Ultimately, NAD is almost like your currency, your energy molecule that you use to combat the oxidative stress that you experience from just being alive. You consume NAD all throughout the 24-hour period to conduct different processes such as your antioxidant defense, your DNA repair, your energy production, your metabolism, your digestion, your muscle function and all those things require NAD. The less NAD you have because of aging or some other variables, then the less energy and the less resources you have to conduct these kinds of operations and thus you start to age much faster. So what is the primary reason of why you see a decrease in NAD with age? The primary reason is because the NAD is being degraded and destroyed by oxidative stress and inflammation primarily. The main protein responsible for that is CD38. With age, you see an increase in CD38 and then a corresponding decrease in NAD levels. So before you start taking NAD boosters to raise your NAD levels, you first have to make sure that you don't have excess CD38 that's going to destroy your NAD. CD38 is primarily increased by reactive oxygen species as well as inflammation. If your body is experiencing high amounts of inflammation from metabolic disorders like dyslipidemia, hyperglycemia, insulin resistance, or if you just have too much body fat, especially visceral fat around the organs, then your inflammation levels are going to be much higher. With age, you do see an increase in inflammation levels, which is primarily reflected by a rise in CRP or C-reactive protein. The healthier you are, the better metabolic health you have, the lower your inflammation levels, the lower your CD38 levels are going to be as well. There are also specific compounds that act as CD38 inhibitors, thus helping you to raise NAD levels. They include different kinds of flavonoids like apigenin that you can get from parsley and chamomile, quercetin that you can get from onions and vegetables, luteolin that you get from radicchio and other pink and purple vegetables, and curamanin that you get from elderberries and blackberries. Now let's move on with the actual aspect of raising NAD levels, not just minimizing the loss of NAD. There are three main pathways by which you can make NAD. Number one is the de novo biosynthesis pathway that uses tryptophan as a precursor. Number two is the price handler pathway that uses nicotinic acid. And number three is the salvage pathway, which is the recycling pathway of NAD. Supporting pathways one and two is relatively easy because tryptophan and nicotinic acid are abundant in the average person's diet. But these pathways don't matter nearly as much as the salvage pathway does. Why is that so? Because the vast majority of your daily NAD is produced through the salvage pathway. All the NAD that you create during the 24-hour period gets put back into the salvage pathway. So it doesn't matter how many NAD supplements you take, how much of these precursors you get from your diet. If your salvage pathway isn't working properly, then you're just wasting those supplements and you're wasting those precursors to raise NAD. So the most important part to maximize your daily natural NAD production is to have the salvage pathway working properly. Now the issue is that the salvage pathway has a bottleneck called NAMPT. NAMPT is the rate limiting enzyme in the NAD salvage pathway, meaning that it controls how much NAD gets recycled. So how do you activate this NAMPT? Through AMPK, the fuel sensor that gets activated under physiological stress such as exercise, calorie restriction or fasting. These hormetic stressors as they're called activate AMPK because your body is under energy stress. The AMPK then enables to activate NAMPT, signaling the body that it needs to recycle its NAD levels because energy is limited. But there is one condition for NAMPT as well that is more important than the aspect of AMPK itself. You see, NAMPT is CERT1 or CERT2 in 1 dependent, which means that it's dependent on circadian rhythm regulation. Sirtuins are a family of proteins that regulate many aspects of the longevity pathways, but especially circadian rhythms. It's been found that disrupting circadian rhythms suppresses the NAD-dependent CERT1 gene, which then lowers the availability of NAD+. 
So the cornerstone to making NAD on autopilot every day to recycle your NAD levels regardless of where you get it from is to have the NAPT bottleneck working properly. If the bottleneck is offline because of suppression of the circadian rhythms or circ one and even the suppression of AMPK, then your body isn't able to reproduce its NAD. The top other ways to increase NAD naturally via recycling NAD are exercise, calorie restriction, fasting, and the dietary phytonutrients like we talked. But the circadian rhythm alignment is key. So ultimately, all of your NAD boosters like nicotinamide riboside or NMN, they work only as good as your NAD salvage pathway is working. If you don't have the salvage pathway, then it doesn't matter how much NAD you boost. Yes, the NAD boosters will raise your NAD levels, but like like we said, all the NAD that you create from supplements or dietary sources, it goes back into the salvage pathway because your body doesn't want to waste anything. And if your body isn't able to recycle the NAD because there's a bottleneck in the NAPT enzyme, then you're just wasting most of that potential to recycle that NAD. So here's the hierarchy that you want to focus on when it comes to raising your NAD levels. Number one is to minimize the loss of NAD by inhibiting inflammation and CD38. Number two is maintaining circadian rhythm alignment to keep the NAPT enzyme online. Third, is to activate AMPK that stimulates NAMPT with exercise. Number four are the dietary precursors to NAD like nicotinic acid and tryptophan. And number five, lastly, is the NAD supplements like NMN and nicotinamide riboside. Now, I do believe that the NAD boosters are worthwhile for a certain population, especially those who already have a baseline low levels of NAD. So if you're already in like the pit, you're in a pit of low NAD, then it's of course very hard to start to exercise. It's very hard to start recycling your NAD level because your NAD low levels are by default very low. So in those kind of situations, yes, it makes sense to like raise your NAD levels, but you definitely need to address the cornerstones as well, which is the CD38 and the circadian rhythm alignment. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.